Charleston celebrates its 350th anniversary this year, and to commemorate that, Charleston Pirate Tours brings you Charleston History Highlights. Hi, I'm Eric of Charleston Pirate Tours. I'm down on the High Battery in downtown Charleston. I want to share a story with you tonight about a young lady named Rachel. Now, the story about Rachel came from a book written by a friend of mine named James Caskey. He's from Savannah and has a tour company down there. But the story he shared in this book was quite fascinating. He told the story about Rachel moving here from Rhode Island, going to the College of Charleston, and was staying with some friends that she was renting a room from in a house. Now, in order to pay her share of the rent, she took a part-time job in one of the restaurants downtown as a hostess. And she got romantically involved with one of the assistant managers. Well, that wasn't supposed to happen because she, He's management, she's an employee. So they had to really keep it a secret. So they couldn't really go out and be seen in public around Charleston. That is until that year the holiday season rolled around. And he came to her and said, you know, I got invited to a New Year's Eve party and I'm gonna take you with me. Well, that just thrilled her to death. He said, it's gonna be down on South Battery and there's some great, great people down there I want you to meet. But there's a fun thing about this party. It's a costume party. Well, she was thrilled to death. Well, as the holiday season got closer, college let out. So she goes back home to see the family, but comes back between Christmas and New Year's. Now, her roommate was a theater major at the college and took her over to the theater department and helped her put this beautiful outfit together. She wanted to go to this party looking like Scarlett O'Hara from Gone with the Wind decided she would just go out and buy this big antebellum looking hat and big beautiful dress. Oh, she looked good. She was so thrilled with this outfit. Well, New Year's Eve rolled around. Time for the party. She gets all fixed up in her pretty outfit and her big hat. And her boyfriend called and said, I'm all tied up with this paperwork. I've got to get done by the end of the year. And that's tonight at midnight. He said, I'm not going to have time to come and pick you up to take you to the party. So we're going to do this. You're going to meet me down at White Point. Meet me in the bandstand. Around here we call that the gazebo. Meet me at the gazebo at 9 o'clock and we'll walk to the party. You can't park on South Battery. That's residential. And they'll either boot or tow your car away. He said, park along the high battery. You'll be fine. Nobody will mess with your car there as long as you want to keep it there. So she got fixed up, got down here about 845, parked her car right here along the high battery, jumped up here on the wall, walking toward the park. She said she was so caught up that evening in all of the festivities, thinking about the night, what was going to happen. She really wasn't paying much attention. She said it wasn't that cold, but she said, wow, it was really, really windy that night. She said, I could barely keep that big hat on my head. And as she's walking along, she's just sort of looking out, mesmerized at the water and the ships going around and the dinner cruises. And all of a sudden, she turned and walked right up on a woman standing in the middle of the battery. And she jumped back embarrassed because she nearly ran into her and said, oh my goodness, ma'am, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to, to startle you. I hope I didn't. And she said the lady was gripping the rail and basically turned and she was just staring out at the water. And Rachel said, I'm so sorry, ma'am. My name's Rachel. I'm just not paying much attention tonight. I'm on my way to a party. And I, I'm, I'm sorry if I bothered you. Are you okay? And she just she shook her head. She said she was fine. Didn't say anything, just shook her head. She said, well, um, I, it's, it's just a beautiful night. Trying to make small talk with her, but she started noticing a few things about this lady. Number one, she noticed how she was dressed. She said she was wearing one of the most gorgeous antebellum dresses she had ever seen in her life. And she was thinking, wow, I hope she's not going to the same party I'm going to. Look at that lady's dress. I mean, it looks like it was made by a professional. Look at me. I'm sitting here in this thing that's held together with Velcro, safety pins, and double stick tape from the College of Charleston Theater Department. So she, at that point, she thought she'd make a joke about it. And she said, ma'am, you must be going to the party. Look at that beautiful dress compared to mine. She said, you know, I'm going to meet my boyfriend in the park. Walk down there with me. And that way we can go in together and have a big laugh about it. How you're dressed and my dress and just have a great evening. Come on, let's get down there. And she said the lady wouldn't move. She said, ma'am, aren't you going to the party? She just shook her head no. She said, well, I really kind of thought you were dressed like that. 
But then she said she really got a weird vibe off of this whole event that was unfolding around her. Because she said, as I was staring at her, it looked as if she was crying. And then she couldn't help but notice her dress once again. She said the wind was howling up on the battery. She said, I could barely keep my hat on. My dress was just flapping in the wind and that lady's dress was hanging perfectly straight. And she said, I really started feeling strange at that moment. And I looked at her and I said, ma'am, are you all right? And she shook her head again. And then she said, well, do you live somewhere around here, ma'am? And then she said she turned and made eye contact with me. And then she turned and looked back over our shoulder at the house right across the street. And I turned and I looked and I said, are you talking about that house over there with the beautiful balcony and that sign? And I turned back. She was gone. She said at that point I went racing down the battery to the park, screaming. Got to the park. There was my boyfriend waiting on me. He said, what in the world is wrong with you? And I tried to explain to him that I had run into this ghost on the battery. And he said, oh, for crying out loud. Come on, let's go to the party. You're seeing things. So we walk into this beautiful home. Walk in. People there I'd never met, but he knew every one of them. And these are people's names he was mentioning that I'd only heard about. And as he's introducing me to these people, he says, yeah, and before we even got here, she claimed she saw a ghost down on the battery and starts laughing in front of all these people. I'm in a room full of strangers, and he's standing there laughing at me. She said, I was so humiliated and embarrassed at that point, I didn't know what to do. And he said, honey, I'm going to grab a drink. And he walked off and left me standing with these people, and they're all just standing there looking at me going, oh, my, <laughs> whispering behind their hands and snickering. She said, I felt like I was this big. She said, at that moment, I just raced out of the house, came back and jumped in my car, went home. And I walked into that restaurant the next day on New Year's Day and I found him. I said, I never want to see you again. I've never been so humiliated and embarrassed in my life. And I turned and I never looked back. The smartest thing she ever did. So my buddy James was standing here with him when she was telling that story and said, all right, I got a couple of questions for you. Would this happen to be the house that she was pointing at? And they turned and looked at this house and said, that's the house right there. He said, good, I got another question. And he pulled up a picture of the woman. He said, is this the lady you talked to? Her mouth fell open. And she said, that is exactly who I stood out there talking to. He said, are you sure? He said, sir, I spent five minutes talking to that woman in the dark. I think I will never, ever forget what she looks like. He said, good. I've got my story. Now, who is this woman? Well, it turns out that this lady had a tragedy in her own life, actually several tragedies. Well, first of all, she didn't ever live in that house across the street. Probably some of her husbands. Because she was actually married to a man named Joseph Austin, who was the governor of South Carolina. They lived in Georgetown, but they did live briefly at 94 Church Street. But the most of her life was spent there in the Georgetown area with her husband. Now, in 1802, they had a child and shortly after the birth of the child, her father came down to visit his grandson. But he had to make a hasty escape out of where he had been. Why? Because his namesake, his grandson, was Theodosia, excuse me, Aaron Burr Austin. Her father is Aaron Burr. Her maiden name is Theodosia Burr. Yeah, you've heard of him. So, they, he came down. Of course, we know the story of, of uh, what happened with uh, Aaron Burr and all the dueling and such. But the story has another twist to it because on the 30th of June in 1812, their son passed away. Now this was a tragedy, obviously, to lose your child at 10. 
Well, what else could she do except go into deep depression, which she did. Now, her husband, Joseph, encouraged her to go to New York to see her father. By this point, he's come back from a period of time. He was exiled over in England. He's now back living in New York. And she, he says, go see your dad. It'll do you both good. So on New Year's Eve in 1812, she took a ship out of Georgetown named Patriot, heading up to New York to see her dad. But she never was seen or heard of again after then. Days later, as ships are coming in from the sea, or all the, the men are talking about this raging storm that they all experienced off the outer banks of North Carolina on New Year's Eve. Said it was one of the worst they'd ever seen outside of a real hurricane. So everyone assumed that the ship was lost at sea. But what's also interesting is maybe not with Theodosia. Years later, a story appeared in a newspaper in Alabama about a man who had actually been on a ship off of Nags Head, North Carolina on New Year's Eve. And he claimed they came across a ship out there in that raging storm named Patriot. Came alongside him. The members of the crew of the Patriot and all the people aboard thought they were coming to their rescue, but what they didn't know was this was a pirate ship. It attacked that ship, killed every man on the ship, stole everything of value, and sank it. But he said there was a woman on the ship. Best I can recall, her name was Theosha. And we brought her aboard our ship, and she refused to stay with the captain in his quarters. So at his request, we threw her overboard. The ghost of Theodosia Burr Austin has been seen as far north as the beaches of Nags Head, North Carolina, as far south as Georgetown, and right here on the battery to a young lady named Rachel about 10 years ago. I'm Eric with Charleston Pirate Tours. Happy birthday, Charleston. <laughs>